My husband, 33, has two daughters, pre-tweens, from a previous marriage. He shares custody of them with his ex-wife Mina, 33 female. They divorced seven years ago. I met him five years ago and we're almost two years married. This is my, 30 female, first biological child. Things are tense between us and Mina. I mostly stay out of discussions between them because she doesn't like it. And ultimately, the girls don't need more tension between their two homes for the sake of me showing up. That doesn't mean I don't discuss things with my husband or that I'm uninvolved, but when it comes to communicating with their mom, I don't insist that my voice be heard equally like the two bio and legal parents. My husband would like me to be an equal part of it, but the tension is significantly less since I made the decision not to sit in on these discussions, which I would only go to support my husband, but even that was something Mina disliked. I bring this up because this is being considered on this point. A few weeks before I found out I was pregnant, the girls told my husband Mina was pregnant. Mina is single, for anyone who asks, and is pregnant via a donor. They were really excited. When we told them we were expecting, they weren't excited. They see their mom having a baby as different than me having a baby with their dad. We get along, so this was a surprise. But they don't see me as a parent, so to them the baby isn't a sibling. While their mom's baby has just their mom, so they're real siblings. This is something being addressed via therapy and my husband and I are talking to them. Now on to the gifts. Mina bought the girls roughly $500 worth of gifts each that they'll receive from the baby when she's born. My husband wanted us to do this too and he told me we need to match it at least because they already prefer their sister from mom and still don't see their brother from us as a real sibling. Neither baby is born yet. I told him I don't think we should spend a lot on gifts like that. My husband said he's worried it's just another negative for our son if we don't. My husband's parents found out through Mina about the gifts and they told us we better do better than that. I told them it was an insane amount of money to spend for this. They accused me of not caring about the girls and not valuing a good relationship or a good sibling relationship between them and my son. They think it's unreasonable to not want to spend a lot of money in these circumstances. Am I the idiot? I couldn't help but laugh at the idea of a newborn coming out and clutching a gift for their siblings. Unless it's a gift certificate, I'd hope for a C-section. Even then, talk about the worst paper cut of your life. Apologies if I went a bit far. You are not the idiot. If you engage in this competition with Mina, it won't stop here. I have no doubt it'll escalate. Rise above and don't play this game. You're doing the right thing by going to family therapy. I really hope it makes a difference. We did a little dog that barks, and I think it cost like $10 for our eldest when our middle was born because they're three years apart, but we didn't do anything when our youngest was born because they're five years younger than our middle child. The age is what makes the difference. At that age, your stepdaughters know the gifts aren't really from the baby, which makes the whole idea unnecessary. This sets a bad precedent, making them think they must be appeased for his existence. It feels like another social media trend where parents are expected to buy gifts for siblings when a new baby arrives. This is exactly right. A $500 present because they're getting a new sibling? Screw that. My grandchild was happy with two new books I bought for her when her new sibling arrived. If you match Mina's gifts, she'll find another ridiculous way to one-up you. The only way you win this game is by not playing. And the Steppies don't consider Opie's son their sibling. This isn't going to change, irrespective of the money poured in. You cannot change the emotions of children with money. Opie needs to remember that she is the only one who appears to be in her son's corner. Opie, Mina has set a very dangerous trap for you and your husband. The girls also believe that their dad is the father of Mina's new baby. This all needs to be straightened out ASAP. I, a teen male, need some advice, and this is a messy family thing, so I need to bring up the background first. My mom and dad got married 18 years ago. My mom lost her first husband four years before their marriage and my dad lost his first wife six years before. My mom had three kids with her first husband and my dad had two with his first wife. My half-siblings are all nine plus years older than me. My parents never really had the typical marriage and they never blended families. They married for a roommate situation. They never forced their kids to interact and never tried to bond with their stepkids. My dad told me none of the kids wanted a stepfamily, so they didn't give them one. Instead, they focused on making the best of things that they had while enjoying adult companionship. My mom had her family and my dad had his, and the two sides, even when living under one roof, never merged or did anything together. And when I was born, neither side wanted me. I was seen as another part of the not-family-but-roommate deal. My parents don't share a bedroom. They don't go on dates. 
They play puzzles together, watch TV together and eat together sometimes. But if one of their kids has a birthday, the parent goes without the spouse. They take turns visiting their own kids for a few nights. I stay with the parent who doesn't go for visits. I'm never welcome in my half-siblings' homes. My parents have no photos from their wedding. Our house has photos from their first weddings and their first families. We don't have very many family photos with me. I don't ever see any of my half-siblings. My mom or dad will sometimes ask me to say hi if they're on the phone with them, but I never get a hi back, so yeah. My parents plan to be buried with their original spouses and kids. There's room in both graves for them and their kids and kids' spouses and maybe some grandkids, but I don't have a spot. Sorry for all the weird background, but I bring this all up because mom's daughter is getting married and she wants me to go to the wedding with her since she can bring someone and since I'm a sibling she thinks it should be me, but I refused. I told mom her kids don't accept me as a sibling and I'll be left on my own most of the time. I won't be in any photos or anything and I might even get her hostility, but my mom is saying I need to come with her. Am I the idiot for refusing? This sounds like a tortuous experience. Your mother is almost two decades too late, including you. Decline the invitation. Your mum can go by herself. If she needs company, then she can take your dad or a friend. You don't want to go to a wedding where you don't know anyone but your mum and only have a nodding acquaintance with the bride. This is a horrible, horrible way to raise a child, and I'm so sorry your parents are like this. Get therapy as soon as you're able, but I also want to remind you that you do not owe them anything. People love to bring that up with idiot parents, but their raising you is quite literally the bare minimum, and they've done an awful job of it too. So no, you don't owe it to your mother to go to this wedding, and you don't owe it to them to keep in your life or do anything for them once you turn 18. Just something to think about for the future. Whatever you decide to do is ultimately your choice. I'm a teen male, my parents' youngest kid and the only kid they named based on what they liked versus what the family wanted them to name us. My siblings were all named after family members, as my dad and mom's families preferred. By the time they got around to having me, they were like, heck this crap, and told their family they were choosing a name based on what they liked and not based on family. So they named me Sonny. Yeah, the girl version of Sonny with an O. I don't care. I don't think Sonny is girly because it has a U versus an O, but anyway. My parents started to regret my name when I was a tween. I don't remember exactly when, but I can remember being about that age and my parents sometimes started calling me by my middle name and only stopping when I told them it was weird and I liked my first name. When I was a young teen, they asked me if I ever went by a nickname and I said no. Last year, they said some kids changed their names before graduating high school because they wanted something more grown up and they wanted to save the added expense of changing the name on their degree. I was like, oh, I guess if people want that, it makes sense. Then I said it must suck to hate your name. Six months ago, my parents said I looked like a James, nicknamed Jamie. I asked them why they thought that, and they said I just had that look. They asked what I thought of the name, and I said I like Jamie, but prefer Sonny. Then they asked me if I liked the name Luke, and I said no. In June, they asked me if I would consider letting them change my name to something different. They said they felt like they named me as a big heck you to their families, but felt bad that I had such an unserious name for a man. I told them I didn't want to change my name and I've always loved how they discussed finding my name. They said their feelings had changed and they felt like the name being cute, light and full of hope wasn't great for going into my adult years. They said they deeply regretted it. I told them I was glad they made the choice they did and they shouldn't stress it. But last week they got the paperwork for a legal name change, presented me with like three name choices and asked me to pick. They said they really didn't want to live with the guilt. I told them I'm not changing my name because of their name regret. I told them how I feel about my name is more important now. They told me I should at least think of their feelings and consider the future and whether I'll be taken seriously. Am I the idiot? What the heck? Six months ago, my parents said I looked like a James, nicknamed Jamie. So are they planning to push you to change your name every time you change your hairstyle or wardrobe? Regardless of how you spell it, Sunny with an O or Sunny with a U is a perfectly normal name for a male. An identity is intertwined with a name and it's hard to separate the two. You and you alone are the person that should decide if you want to change your name. OP could try to one-up them. Mom, Dad, I decided you're right. I'm going to change my name to Foo Foo Bunny Unicorn. Get me the papers. Not the idiot. Your parents sound exhausting. I mean, this is just sad. Being cute and light and full of hope wasn't great for going into my adult years. 
OP, please go forth into your adult years being cute and light and full of hope. If they don't stop, there might be a way to at least hit them with a reality check since they don't want to listen to your feelings. How about I keep my first name and change my last name? That way, no one will know you regret your child based off their name. That way, we can pretend we aren't related and you can finally get rid of your guilt at my existence. Our names define us, whether it's one we're given or choose ourselves. It's for us and only us. Good luck, OP. I hope your parents open their eyes and stop trying to force their childish emotions on their actual child. My wife and I have been married for 16 years and together for 20. We have a daughter who's a tween. Last month, my wife confessed to cheating on me in a one-night stand during a business trip. She was really remorseful about everything and promised every possible reconciliation step. But this was a huge shock and heartbreak to me and I needed time to think about it. I went back and forth a lot on whether I wanted to leave my wife. There was obviously a lot of tension in the house and our daughter noticed it and asked questions, but we were just quiet about everything. However, after taking three weeks to think about it, I decided I wanted to make it work, given my wife would follow all the reconciliation steps. However, I also told my wife she had to tell our daughter what she did and that our daughter deserved to know the truth. My daughter was close with her and my wife was hesitant about it as she worried this would damage their relationship. However, I told my wife that given her moral failings, she had to do this as a test of her character, i.e. being truthful if she wanted to stay in this relationship. After taking a couple of days to think about it, my wife told our daughter everything that happened. It hasn't affected their relationship too much, as far as I can notice, which makes me happy, but my daughter does seem a bit more reserved towards her mom. Was I the idiot? It's pretty messed up that your daughter became a pawn in your reconciliation with your wife. You used your daughter to test your wife's character? You're both idiots. Your daughter had nothing to do with this and doesn't need to be dragged down into it, especially a teen. Just divorce, man. Your wife ruined the family, but you doubled down on it by involving the kid. There will only be festered resentment from all three parties moving forward, and you played a part in that. A split family is better for the kid than a broken one masquerading as a whole. And let's be honest, there's no reconciliation here. It's just someone being an idiot and involving their kid. OP, do not involve children in your marital issue. Do you have any idea what you're actually asking? You're punishing your wife by hiring your daughter. Your daughter is at such a tricky age, so if you want your daughter to go out and deal with this in harmful ways that will mess up her life, then go ahead. You need to get into therapy ASAP. This. Please, please don't make your children your therapist. I have so many mental health issues from being involved and hearing about my parents' marital and mental health and cheating issues as a child, and I think about what a different human being I would have been all the time. Trust me, don't put weight on your child's shoulders, which is not meant to be hers in the first place. Deal with your problems by yourselves. Let her be a child. I agree, but will the kid find out anyway, especially at that age? As a teen, you're already aware of such things. The parents are fine and everything is good, but after mom comes back from a business trip, things go south and dad is filing for divorce. Yeah, at teen, I would have jumped to cheating. Opie's not the idiot. Our family has been growing and since last year we started booking a holiday home in the countryside just before Christmas so we could all spend time together before celebrating separately with our own smaller families. Most of us live in small city apartments so there's no space to host everyone. The house we rent is expensive but spacious with a sauna, fireplace and a chef's kitchen perfect for a Christmas getaway. Each family also has their own room with an ensuite. This year, we booked the same house right after last year's stay and made the down payment at the beginning of the year. I informed my family in May that we, my husband, kids and I, are moving overseas in September. My cousin and her partner, who were expecting a baby, also decided not to go. Her parents said they'd cover her share of the cost. Now my sister is asking me to pay for my share, saying it's unfair for the rest of them to cover the extra cost. Dividing it among the others would only be about $15 more each, but my sister thinks it's also unfair for my cousin's parents to pay for our share. I'm really torn. Should I pay to keep the peace? I'm upset because this feels unfair, especially since we're tight on money after the big move. It's also been harder to communicate with my family now that we're on the other side of the world, though in some ways being distant from family drama can be a relief. I miss them all and want to do the right thing, but I can't help feeling this isn't fair. Edit, my sister did the booking, 
and the down payment was shared amongst every adult. I'm not asking for the down payment back. I informed them that I'm not going in May. My husband is from another country and we moved back to his home country. A lot can happen within a few months. I thought we were leaving after Christmas this year, but things changed. You aren't asking for the deposit back. Wow, your sister is a greedy idiot. I would remind sis of this fact. You've already contributed to a trip that you won't be going on and you're not asking for a refund. Anyone who says otherwise is cheap and greedy. You also gave them ample notice that you wouldn't be going. You're not the idiot and they can cover the extra cost. Disagree, you are the idiot. You knew that the booking was a commitment. Every other family has agreed to this booking based on what they were told it would cost, which was based on your promise to go. What if four families suddenly cancelled? Should whoever is left be left with the bill for all of them? Suppose this was a shared skiing trip. The main expense was individual plane tickets or hotel rooms. Would you also expect your family to pay for your unused booking because it's less money for them to share? Of course not. You would know that when you committed to the booking, you committed to paying your share. For some reason, because it's one shared house, you expect your family to pay for the room you leave empty. Your stance is, it's no big deal for others to fork out for your decision. You're wrong. It's your responsibility to pay your share.